I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Shepard, it was not a malfunction. This was a trap. We need a little help here, Edie. Hello my beautiful nerds and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Mizzle Dan Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. The last one was bonkers. It was crazy. The collectorship was no joke. Uh, insanity it makes it even harder. The fact that we're a vanguard on those platforms makes it even harder. And the fact that it was bugging out like crazy made it even harder. But we were able to do it uh, in no small part to the scimitar assault shotgun and the brand new uh, assault rifle training that we got in the last episode so that we could equip the Matok with uh, Inferno ammo is such a fun way to play Vanguard, by the way. It is so fun. Uh, and yes, Claymore would have been great. And I know I'm going to regret it every night when I close my eyes now. I just think Claymore. But, uh, but this is this is the road I went down. And this is the road I'm going to go down. And if you want to go down a different road, you go down a different road. You're not the boss of me. I can do what I want. Anyways, in this episode, we're finally going to get the bonus power that I've been wanting. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that, as you know by the title, is that we, my friends, are going to go talk to Samara. And we are going to get her loyalty mission. So, first things first, cruise quarters. Let's see what she's up to. Maybe she wants us to, I don't know, do something nice and not... Who knows? Hello, Samara. I am glad you came. I must ask for your help. That is not easy for me. It's all right. Just tell me what you need. When we met on Ilium, I told you about a very dangerous person I was pursuing. Using the information you obtained, I have located her. She's been going by the name Morinth. I would like to apprehend her before she disappears again. Didn't you say you'd pick up her trail after our mission? I know where she is, right now. In a month, she may be gone. This is the best opportunity I've ever had. Where is she? Omega. A nightclub called Afterlife. Which seems a perfect place for her to hunt. And oddly enough, a place we know well. How important is this? Killing her has been my focus for 400 years. It is the most important thing in my life. And the reason I became a Justicar. I guess we're gonna go after Morinth, the Ardat Yakshi. Tell me about her. She is an Ardat Yakshi. It is a term from a dead Asari dialect. It means demon of the night winds, but that is mythology. She is simply a very dangerous woman who kills without mercy. So is an Ardat Yakshi a special kind of murderer? Morinth suffers a rare genetic disorder. When she mates with you, there is no gentle melding of nervous systems. She overpowers yours, burns it out, hemorrhages your brain. You end up a mindless shell, and soon after, you are dead. That is terrifying. So you hunt down these Asari just because they're born with a genetic condition? It manifests with maturity. When one is diagnosed, she is offered the chance to live in seclusion and comfort. If she refuses, it shows her addiction to the ecstasy she gets from killing her mates. There is no redemption for such a person. They have to choose between prison and death. It is an addictive condition. Remember how adaptive we are. If Morinth does not want to be cured, she won't be. Can't she abstain? Each encounter gives her strength. The effect is narcotic. The more she does it, the more she needs to do it. She will never stop. She can't. Huh. Why isn't this ever mentioned in Asari literature or art? When we were primitive, there was much fascination with Ardat Yakshi. Some cultures worshipped them as gods of destruction. Now the Asari have a place in the galaxy, and they don't wish this defect to be widely known. As far as I know, only three exist today. Two chose a life of seclusion. The third ran. Morinth. She ran. And I am sworn to kill her. 
I don't know that I blame her for running. When she fled, she proved her addiction. She was not taking a great moral stand. She simply wants to keep killing. She is a tragic figure, but not a sympathetic one. You know, this is kind of tough, but I can see why she's dangerous. I can also see why people would have thought of them as gods of destruction. This is definitely worthy of your full attention. She confuses her victims, twists their feelings. They will do anything for her favor. Well, let's go get her. We need to stop her. Thank you, Commander. There are no words to express what this means to me. There is one thing more. This creature, this monster. She is my daughter. You said this is genetic. How many children do you have? Three. And three Ardat Yakshi are in existence today. It is as it sounds. Marinth was always the wild one. She was happy and free, but selfish. And there we have it. We get to learn something about Samara that paints her as the truly tragic character. I cannot imagine what this is like for you. I do not want pity, Shepard. I do not accept it. My daughter's condition is my fault, and my redemption lies in killing her. Do not pity me. Simply understand my situation. How did all this happen? I spent my youth on the move, adventuring. I killed people, mated with them, or just danced the night away. I learned so much, experienced so much, and then my matron days came. I could finally sit back, bask, and enjoy my family. But in one moment, it was all taken away. It sounds terrible. I sat in a med lab while a nearsighted doctor droned at me, and I learned that nothing was as I thought it would be. I gave up all that I possessed. I own nothing, claim nothing. All my knowledge will die with me. Now my purpose is to destroy my own children. Those moments change you. And I've hundreds of years left to live with that. I say too much. Forgive me. Help me find my long lost daughter and kill her. Okay. We'll go find Morinth. That is... Man. All right, well, that means we have one job to do, and that is go to Omega and slaughter Samara's daughter, which, 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 you know, <laughs> I didn't know we'd be doing that. Well, I, I did know I've played this game. But, but, you, but Thane still. Would like to speak with you, yeah, Thane's gonna have to wait. We got something going on. So we're gonna plot a course immediately for Omega. It's very important that we get there. If there's an Ardet Yakshi, something that was talked about as being a god of destruction back when they were primitive, uh, the Asari were primitive. That is something that we need to focus on on getting rid of right now. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're gonna head to Omega and we're actually not going to choose, when we dock here, we're actually not going to choose a party of Samara, not yet anyways. There's actually side quests that we can pick up and there's additional dialogue if we go ahead and choose Miranda and Jacob, surprisingly. So that's who we're going to pick. I'm also going to just max out Jacob's pull here and I'm gonna go into pull field because it feels good. Uh, heavy pull is fine. It, makes things last longer i just don't really think it's worth it on this difficulty i don't really care if something's floating that long nine seconds is is fine so we're gonna go with pull fields i'd rather multiple things get pulled than just one enemy you know what i mean so that's what we're going to do uh and we're just gonna rock with this party it actually doesn't matter what we choose for weapons at all believe this or not daily death count on omega is too high for me to pinpoint an ardot yakshi's location however given the reputation of ardot yakshi among the asari Aria Talok may have tracked her movements. Good for us to know. So one of the the well now I don't know what I was. Oh, this is a this is a non uh, no combat in this loyalty mission. Jacob, over here. You told me about Jacob, didn't you? And here we have this Salarian named Ish, who apparently knows Jacob. Jacob Taylor, I certainly didn't expect to see you again. I'm sure you didn't. No, please. So many years have passed since Tortuga. Lots of water under the bridge. Hmm. And how do you guys know each other? I take it you've met each other before? 
Jacob and I worked a mission with Ish a few years back. He helped us with some information. You sent me into a nest of Turian thugs in a Batarian ambush. Hey now, my job was to get you inside. Anything more would have cost you extra. And I have a feeling that we can't trust this guy. Is this gonna be a problem? If we don't walk away, I promise he'll give you a reason to shoot him. It sounded like you were watching us, Ish. You need something? Well, if you'd be so kind, I hoped you might consider a proposition. I need skilled, trustworthy people to take care of a little business for me. Nothing illegal, of course, but it's paying work. What about you? What kind of business do you do? Important business. So important that with your help, we can change Omega. What do you mean, we can change Omega? Well, I didn't want to say anything, but certain people here have business deals with people throughout the galaxy. If we were to have information involving those deals, we could make some ripples around here. That's all I'll say. I'm listening. I'm in the information business, specifically the buying and selling of privileged material. It's nothing illicit. I just need someone to pick up packages in certain locations and bring them to me here. Hmm. What's your angle? No angle. I'm a simple businessman. What do you say? I can do that. My contacts use specific drop points. I need you to look outside Merib's shop on the Citadel and inside Eternity on Ilium. Look around for anything that might hold a data package and bring those packages to me. Good to see you alive, Jacob. Well, sounds good to me. So now we're going to go ahead. We have a mission from Ish and we get a ton more dialogue if we have Miranda and Jacob with us. But we're going to go back to the ship here and request two new party members. We're going to choose, get this, a party of Samara and Grunt because, well, that's going to be useful. And we'll go ahead. They're fine with what they have. Like I said, it doesn't actually matter because they can't. There's there's no combat in this mission. So we're going to wait on putting anything with uh, with Samara, her points, because we want to max out her Reeve. And we're going to head to Afterlife. We heard that there was the Ardat Yakshi potentially hunting grounds here. And Arya Talok may know a little bit more about that. But more than that, we're actually going to get a side quest that we have been able to get for a very long time. So if we come over here, we'll be able to talk to Grizz, who's going to tell us uh, a little bit about the Patriarch. Arya has a job she needs doing. You up for some work? That depends on what Arya has in mind. Arya's gotten word that some blood-packed mercs plan to kill an old acquaintance of hers, a Krogan named Patriarch. She'd like you to keep that from happening. What's the Blood Pack's problem with Patriarch? If you've met Patriarch, you know. He can't keep his damn mouth shut. Some people don't appreciate his stories, especially when he dips into non-fiction. What's Arya's interest in protecting him? Patriarch was one of her deadliest enemies back in the old days. Now she keeps what's left of him around as a trophy. As long as he lives, he's a perfect example of what happens when you go up against Arya. Why come to me? Arya's usual muscle not up for the job? Because Arya said so. What other reason do you need? People like Arya don't do things without a damn good reason. I want to hear it. Fine, but I didn't tell you this, dummy. If it gets out that Arya's protecting Patriarch, well, that can look like a weakness. And some people might want to exploit that. You're not on a payroll, so you helping Patriarch just seems like a random act of kindness. All right. Well, we can do it. That is Jim Cummings, after all. I'll look into it. Good. Patriarch's downstairs, likely surrounded by his fans. Get him into hiding until the mercs move on. Come back here when it's done. You'll get your due. All right. I'll we'll be, be back. back when the job's done. Good luck. Thanks. But first, let's go ahead and check in with Arya while we're up here. What do you need? We can ask about Samara's Samara's daughter? An Asari fugitive is hiding out here. She's an Ardat Yakshi. We need to find her. I knew it. Nothing leaves a body quite so empty as an Ardat Yakshi does. You haven't taken steps to kill her. Why would I? She hasn't tried to seduce me. Her last victim was a young girl. Pretty thing. Lived in the tenements near here. That's where I started looking. I guess that's exactly what we're gonna do. Thanks for the help. Good luck finding her. Better luck catching her. And let's head downstairs and see if we can 
come face to face with Patriarch, which you might remember him from a previous episode when we were here. And I was like, this is the best guy ever because he's Jim Cummings, the voice of Winnie the Pooh and so many others. So we're gonna continue down here and he's in the room on the lower level of afterlife on the left hand side here if we're looking at the bar so we'll come over to this room over here and see what our fella's up to and like i said highly recommend having grunt in your party for this you again greetings specifically i recommend having a loyal grunt rumor has it some people want you dead know anything about that oh i can think of a few i know things oh Secrets, old grudges. A few floors you can dig up to find bodies underneath. And someone who wanted to weaken Aria might come after me. They do it to get to her, you see. Not for me. I don't matter enough anymore to have enemies of my own. You also may notice that for some reason the music has bugged out and it is no longer playing. Some people want you dead. I've been asked to move you to safety. Well, of course. Arya wouldn't want me hurt. It would make her look bad. Or perhaps Arya's reputation is no longer my concern. Perhaps I will stay. See who thinks me important enough to kill. Or, now we have two wonderful options here. We can intimidate, which is going to lead to a pretty badass fate for Patriarch, or we can let him we can let uh him we can have him let us be his his muscle now i will say if you go renegade in the intimidate option what kind of krogan are you it will lead to the patriarch's death and not much else but he will be able to die with honor and a blaze of glory just like he wanted to when he fought aria way back when but i think there's other ways of preserving his honor so we're gonna be his muscle here's an idea let me handle the assassins for you. Declare us your Krant. We will face down the assassins in your name. My Krant. It's been so long since anyone wished to fight for my honor. If you would do this for me, I would be grateful. I might even be a Krogan again. And we absolutely will for you, Patriarch. So we're going to, all we need to do is find an exit and we'll be approached by some mercenaries. This is the closest one. Out of our way, human. You here for Patriarch? What if we are? You gonna do something about it? Patriarch sent us. Said to do whatever it takes. Your Patriarch's Krant? I wasn't aware the old man had one. You should have done your homework. Well, I guess we dealt with that easy enough. You gotta love having a squad that just knows what to do when the moment arises, you know? dodging under a, a, a gun, kicking a guy in the stomach and the squad just shooting them to death. You killed them all. And everyone knows that the Patriarch is not to be crossed. Thanks to you, Arya may think of me as more than a trophy. A real advisor, maybe. Or even a threat. Use this. Don't ever let anyone think you're weak again. Thanks to you. I am a Krogan. By the way, be careful with Arya. She will approve of what you've done, I think. But not of you altering the balance of Omega. I think it reminds her too much of herself. I just think that is such a better solution to the Patriarch quest than the other option that we could have got. So let's go back up to Aria real quick and see what we get for doing that. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. Afterlife without music sure is weird. Let's talk to Grizz. Aria wants to speak with you, human. She heard you took on the Blood Pack assassins yourself. I wouldn't keep her waiting. All right. Uh-oh. Is she gonna be mad? Word has it that Patriarch's Krant took out the men sent here to kill him. Funny, I didn't know he had a Krant. Patriarch has more influence than you thought. I see. 
Well, maybe I should watch my back then. It's not what I asked, but you got the job done. You've done a lot for me, Shepard. Let me return the favor. We're sending your coordinates to a cache on an uncharted world. You want it? It's yours. What's the catch? No catch, I don't need it, and I don't want it to go to waste. Whatever you find is yours to deal with. We friendly enough to talk about who you were before Omega? You're reaching back centuries, Shepard. Long before anything that should matter to you. So why keep it secret? No reason, from your perspective. But there are plenty of people out there with long memories. I've had a few careers, a few names. Commando training, mercenary leanings. I've kept what was valuable and dropped the baggage. I thought you were in charge. Why so scared of your past? I have nothing to fear on Omega. That doesn't mean I want to broadcast my past to the galaxy. You'd be surprised how long some entities can hold a grudge. This little exercise with Patriarch? A footnote. Not even the first Krogan I've pissed off. You're important, but also isolated. No other allies out there to back you up? I lean toward a particular type of work. It tends to encourage professional rivalry. Sometimes you'd rather disappear than be forced to kill someone. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have started here with nothing. You must have been someone important. I've always been important, even if others didn't recognize it. So yes, I had money to start this operation. I also had creditors who thought they were more entitled to it. I let them chase a ghost, or several. It's relatively easy to outlive a Solarian, but not their record keeping. I just love that more dialogue with her has opened up. Arya Talok is just an amazing character. All right, I'll drop it. But I want to know a little bit more Better about luck her. Next time. <laughs> yeah, I want to know a little bit more about her relationship with the Patriarch. Sounds like you and Patriarch have a history. As I said, he was a powerful friend before he tried my patience. The toughest fight of my life. But of course I won. Patriarch doesn't sound like something an Asari would come up with. I found it humorous. He wanted power. And we pretended he had it with a word that doesn't exist for my people. I eventually found a certain respect for the title and the man. Oh. So you kept him around as a trophy? I did. A trophy and an example. Whenever someone thought about taking me on, I pointed them to Patriarch. Dignity is one of the few commodities not available on Omega. Interesting. But let's move on. Do you need something else? Nope. That's it. Time to go find Thanks. Samara's Maybe daughter. Come back later. You should find a nice young man to keep you warm in the meantime. You look like you need to loosen up a little. Oh, well, that's rude. You don't need to comment on that. But also, uh, maybe. Where's Liara? Anyways, we're gonna head out of Omega and the, the weird, if we dance right now, oh, I'm so curious. If we dance, there's gonna be no music. Oh, it's gonna be so awkward. But we're gonna head to the market area of Afterlife. No reason to hang out here and see if we can find this Ardat Yakshi. Apparently there was a body, so she murdered someone fairly recently and the body, nothing makes the body as empty as that, as Arya said. Arya Talok, by the way, does have a book um, that uh, is, I'm uh, escaping, the name of it is escaping, but she's in a comic uh, and, and book and all that. And you can actually read a little bit more about her history. And it's actually very, very good. Uh, very, very good. And I love how much she has. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and finally buy this heavy skin weave, which is going to give us 20% more health health over at Ken's shop. Yes, that pretty much is going to make us broke, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna buy that uh, because we, we honestly just need a little bit, we need to be a little bit tankier than what we are. So we're gonna come up here as well. There's actually more items that we can buy here on Omega now. And we can also get, talk to Samara as long as she comes over here. Now, this is gonna be a little bit hard to hear her because we also have this like news that's going off. People come to places such as this seeking a better life. And when they get here, they find this. Vibrant people forced into destitution on a world filled with criminals. They deserve protection. If I survive your mission, I may return here. 
Uh oh. So that means she's gonna return here to Chanka. That's gonna be a lot of dead people. Anyways, we can come over to the Omega Market and there's actually some stuff that we can buy here. The stabilization gauntlets, which we're gonna go ahead and buy. We're not equipping these at all. It is merely for completion sake, my friends. That is the only reason. And we can head over to Harrods and buy this ordnance pack as well. That is it. We have cleaned out the shops that are available on Omega. They are done. That is all that we can get. It is over. Money does not need to be spent here anymore. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So we've talked to Grunt and Samara. and gotten their unique dialogue here, but we're not quite done. Now we need to find where this person was killed and should be right over here at this apartment that we can now reach. This was the quarantine zone. And now we can go in here and talk to Diana and hear a little bit about what happened to her daughter, the victim of Morinth. Are you here about my daughter? My nephew died a week ago and no one seems to care. The medic said it was a brain hemorrhage, but that's not true. It was murder. Someone killed my nep, my baby. I think she was murdered too, and I'm looking for her killer. Oh, thank you. It's so hard when no one believes you. I'm all alone now. Are you one of Arya's people? Uh, we're not quite one of Arya's people, but it would also take too long to explain who we are, so. I'm here to help. Does it matter who sent me? No one else on this hellhole station gives a damn that my nephew is dead. If you can do something about it, I'll help you however I can. Well, let's go ahead and get some more information about this Arda Yakshi. Did Neff have any friends? Did your daughter have a lot of friends? Not a lot, no. She was shy. Spent most of her time off making her sculptures, not hanging out with friends. Something did change in the last few weeks, though. She started talking about an Asari. Morinth. I see. I didn't like her. She kept dragging Neff out to clubs, and I'm pretty sure she gave my daughter drugs. What kind of a person was this Morinth? I never met her. But Neff talked about her like she was a queen. You'd swear there was no one else alive when she talked about Morinth. That sounds familiar. Samara, does Morinth control her victims with drugs? She controls them through sheer will. The drugs are just a lifestyle. She loves the club, loves the base. She's a hedonist. So this Morinth did hurt my daughter? Is she the one that... that... I will bring justice to the one that did this. We swear to you, Neff will rest easy soon. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> my baby. Did Neff hang out anywhere in particular? She was always quiet working here at home. Then, a few weeks ago, she started going out all the time to the VIP area of that club down the street. I think you need a password or something to get in there. The change was so sudden. She just seemed tired and distracted when she wasn't around Morinth. Hmm. Love or something sinister? What kind of a girl was your daughter? My nephew had a fire inside her. She was shy, but she was creative and driven and uh, the best girl a mother could hope for. She was creative? How so? She was a sculptor. Several galleries were interested in her. Said her work was fresh. Do you mind if I examine Neff's room? I didn't want to disturb anything. Her clothes, her art, her sculptures, everything is the way she left it. The way it will always be. My baby is gone. Thank you. I'm sorry. I just miss her so much. It's okay. We've all suffered loss. I know what it means to lose a daughter. I will avenge her. Thank you. Please, if it helps you find her killer, look through her things. We will be respectful. I'll examine her things. My friends, this is a fairly sad episode of Mass Effect 2, and I'm sorry to bring everybody down, but it ends in a really awesome way. So, you know, at least hold on to your butts for that. So we're going to use this to see if we can Batman what's going on here. And we can find a few different things like this statue here. Neff made that. A man from some gallery offered me four years salary for it. 
That's nice. We can also find a note here. Neff, I'm sending you this hologram by the Elcor artist Forta. His work is sublime, but don't stare at it too long or you may go mad. I don't want anything bad to happen to you, love. I can't wait to hear what you think of Forta. A note from Mordenth herself to Neff. And the important thing here, the diary, we're just going to go ahead and start at the oldest and hear the whole thing. Read the oldest entry. Hey, diary. Cycle 34, orbit 671. There's a lot to talk about. I dropped your root's name, and they let me into the VIP room at Afterlife. I was sure everyone was staring at me. Then the most beautiful Asari starts dancing near me. She moves like water, form, and volume, but shifting, changing. I'm in a trance. Then I'm dancing with her. Later, we went for skewers, and I'm supposed to see her again tomorrow. Read the middle entry. Cycle 36, orbit 671. Oh, am I a freak? Morinth is a girl like me, and she's definitely not human. Just when we dance and the hallux is flowing through me, the way she looks at me with a hunger, a longing, no one's ever looked at me like that. We kiss tonight. Read the newest entry. Cycle 42, orbit 67. She's going to take me to her apartment tonight. Whatever happens, I want to be with her forever. She can sell my pieces. We can live somewhere glamorous, like the women in Vanya that Vid Morinth likes. How did this happen to me? I'm just dumb trash from Omega. Aww. Close the hollow journal. This is Morinth's work. She's attracted to artists and creators. Someone with a spark slightly isolated from their peers. She impresses with sophistication and sex appeal. Then she strikes. The hunt interests her as much as the conquest. Anyone who successfully hunted sapient beings for 400 years warrants caution. Morin speaks to you on many levels. Her body tells yours that she'll bring unimaginable ecstasy. Her scent evokes emotions long hidden. Her eyes promise you things you were always scared to ask of another. Her voice whispers to you after she is done speaking. She sounds more like a highly evolved killer than a genetic defective. The condition has been present since my people huddled around fires at night. Perhaps it is symbiotic rather than a defect. Storming her den would be a mistake. She will have a hundred escape routes planned. She will go to ground and disappear for 50 years or more. This is the closest I've ever been. Well, let's lay a trap for so her. So we have to lure her out. Exactly. Shepard, you read my mind. Afterlife's VIP section seems her preferred hunting ground. You must go there alone and unarmed. Hm. She'll come after me. You can draw Morinth out. She'll certainly flee if she catches sight of me, but she won't be able to resist you. You are an artist on the battlefield. You have the vital spark that attracts her. Your power will draw her in. I'm walking into this place with no gun and no backup. I will be in the shadows watching, Shepard. You will never be alone, this I swear. But you cannot barge in with guns and allies. Morinth is far too cagey. She'd simply disappear. This is a subtle, delicate act. Trust me. Time's wasting. Let's get over there. I agree. We can talk more once we're there. Perfect. And it's actually very close to get to where we're going. So we can talk Hello, to Diana you. again, uh, but anything? she's not going to add anything more than what we already have. So we can head out here. And lucky for us, the VIP section is actually very, very close to Neff and her mom's apartment. So we'll just head over down here. And there it is. There's the VIP only thing, which we tried to get into back when we were on Mo Omega. And they were like, you're not cool enough. But now we know Jarut's name. Apparently will get us in. So what do you want? Let's just make sure we're in the right area. What's behind this door? The VIP section of the club. For those with the right name. Do you want something? Yeah, Jarut sent me. Someone told me the rest of Afterlife's nothing compared to this place. Sounds like a smart person. Who was it? Jarut. Go on in. Word to the wise. Start a fight, we'll hurt you. Someone attacks you, it's okay to defend yourself. It's good to know. You must go in alone. Morinth will be watching. Like any predator, she is cautious. 
You must pique her interest enough that she will approach you. When you are face to face, subtly encourage her to invite you to her apartment. I'll follow discreetly, and when you are alone, I'll spring the trap. Know this, until I get there, you are in great peril. She will be planning to inflict horrors on you. If you are not careful, you will want her to. Weird how this game is so good at describing my kinks. Anyways, we can review our findings to see exactly how we can get Morinth to invite us back to her apartment. Okay, what other things have we learned about Morinth that can help us here? According to Neff's journal, Morinth likes dancing while on a drug called Halax. Neff's journal mentioned a vid called Veyenya. It seemed to have something to do with glamorous women. Morinth sent Neff a note saying she likes the Elcor artist Forta. Well, Shepard, that's everything we know. How can I spark her interest when I'm not even talking to her? Courage or suicidal bravery could attract her. Hurt someone in defense and she will be excited. But pick a fight and she'll be bored. Show skill at working smoothly through a nightclub crowd. She will be intrigued. She'll want you the moment she sees you. The rest is just a matter of overpowering her caution. How do I convince her to take me home? She admires strength, directness, and vigor. Modesty, chivalry, or meekness frustrate and bore her. Violence excites her. You've killed Shepard. She'll like that. Getting her alone and falling under her sway. That'll require careful timing. I will be near, and I will come for you, Shepard. Trust me, as I trust and honor you. You got it. Let's get started. Shepard, we only get one chance at this. Any mistake, and Morinth will disappear. If you're the least bit unsure, come talk to me. I will wait here. And Shepard, thank you. I do not share this burden easily, and you are the only soul I can imagine sharing it with. Now, something that I absolutely, uh, I just, I just, I should have, I should have changed my clothes. You can change your clothes and you'll show up here in whatever casual wear you chose. And there's like a dress that would have looked awesome for this part. And I'm just so upset I didn't choose it. Anyways, we'll come in here and we'll immediately talk to Vidj, who has, uh, he's not part of the actual mission of what we need to do here, which is to talk to very specific people in very specific ways. This guy, though, he doesn't count. Hey, do you know where to get tickets for Expel 10? I heard this amazing Asari say they were her favorite band. I want to, I just want whatever she wants. I got to find tickets. Expel 10 is playing tomorrow. What kind of music do they play? They're a sensory band. Like, they crawl into you and make you feel things. And this is sorry, digs them like you wouldn't believe. I could score way out of my league, you know? You, you gotta help me. We gotta help him. She sounds amazing. Is she here? She was here a couple of days ago talking about the band. She's here a lot. When she comes back, I'm gonna have tickets. All right, now you need to get away from me, bud. I'm ready to punch someone and you're too close. Relax, relax. It's cool. I'll step off. All right. Have a good day then. And we have a few the different people used to be out that on we can talk to. Uh, you'll see that we have Horpfin here that we can talk to. There's people over here that we can talk to. But there are two specific people that we are going to talk to because it is going to lead to Renegade or Paragon points. And it's the only stuff that we can get. So we might as well. And the first people that we can talk to is these Turians over here. Good cred hunting tonight. We'll hit him in the alley. As long as it isn't one of Arya's people, we're good. We gotta get enough creds to keep Hink off our backs. Hey, what are you looking at? And let's go ahead and let them know not much. A pair of sad losers who think they're something and are about to find out they're not. <laughs> Who's gonna show us that? You? The human thinks she's tough. Tougher than you. I kick their booty. That's what I'm talking about, friends. And we'll come over here. We'll see this person dancing to literally no music. I don't know why the music's not on, but hey, it's not. And we're not gonna go and insult this Krogan. He did nothing to us, and that's rude. Instead, we're gonna talk to the bartender and grab some Paragon points. What's up, Edwin? What's up? Uh, I want you to treat your customers. Also, can we just take a moment and appreciate this guy's voice acting? These are good people, but they look bored. Bored people don't spend much. And you got an idea for how I could fix that? A round of drinks shows that you appreciate their business. 
Your rep will improve and you'll make more money in the end. Maybe worth a try once. You better be right. Listen up, everyone! We love having you here, so a round of drinks on the house! My name is Morin. I've been watching you. You're the most interesting person in this place. I've got a booth over here in the shadows. Why don't you come sit with me? I mean, I will say, even her voice Some is attractive. Some nights I come here and there's no one interesting to talk to. Some nights, there's just one person. Tonight, it's you. Why is that? Remember, we want to be brazen, confident, vigor. I know what I like. Do you? And we don't want to talk about Justicars or family or anything that might throw her off. So let's talk about uh, music. What do you think of the music here? Dark rhythms, violent pulses. It stirs something primitive in me. What about you? Well, I just heard about this band and I love them. I'm curious about a band called Expel 10. They get in my head and tear it to pieces. They're in concert soon. Maybe we should go together. You can lose yourself in the music here. There are ways to enhance that. You know? What do you think of Halex? It slithers through my soul. Seems like we share some interests. Yeah, it sure does. Do you know anything about art? It speaks to the darkest places in me. What about you? Do you know the artist Forta? I didn't think anyone around here knew him. He's sublime. Art comes in many varieties. I've seen bids that were more powerful than a sculpture sitting in a gallery. Do you know Veenya? My favorite. The two actresses on it are so glamorous. I'll have to watch it. Maybe we could do that together. Guys, I think things are going well so far. I've traveled all over the galaxy. It changes you, doesn't it? Real travel means going to dangerous places. Where you can see and do things most people can't imagine. Yes. When I travel, I find myself drawn to dark, dangerous places. Violent places? Violence is the surest expression of power. Violence is a means to an end. Power is that end. Do you want to get out of here? My apartment is nearby and I want you alone. And it worked. We have seduced a demon of the night wind who thinks they seduced us, but really we seduced them and, but they, it, it's, oh, it's good. And we'll find ourselves in her apartment. She'll be sitting on the couch, just getting ready. And we can turn around and actually just go ahead and grab this assault rifle damage. Just sitting there behind us. It's so missable. Anyways, we can check out this sword as well. I was into dueling for a while. I love the moment you see it in your opponent's eyes. He knows you're better, and he's going to die. Okay. Have a Halix if you want. But wouldn't you rather have all your senses be clear and sharp right now? I certainly do. Okay, I just wanted some drugs. Anyways, we can also come up here and see this sculpture. What's this? A gift from a suitor. The statue's got more personality than he did. Still, he impressed me enough that he finally got what he wanted. It didn't end the way he hoped. And finally, a chess set. I love any game where your opponent can believe he is about to win just before you kill him. Which I think is about to happen to dear old Morinth here. She doesn't even know that we have her in check. About to be checkmate. Also, if we try to leave... Surely you don't want to leave. Why don't you come over here? I promise you'll like it. Okay, also, let's save our games real quick so we can see some different outcomes. But why don't we go ahead and see what kind of choices we can get here. I love clubs. People, movement, heat. I can still hear the bass like the drums of a great hunt out for your blood. But here, it's muted and you're safe. Is that what you want, Shepard? And we have two different choices. We can say safety is a lie, Morinth. Or we can say no. We're gonna choose safety is a lie. People feel safest right before they die. It's true, we're never safe. I've never understood the fascination with safety. Some of us choose differently. Independence over submission. I think we share that, you and I. We've both killed many times, but that's where the similarities end. Why do you say that I've killed? What do you know? Let's stop playing games. Look 
into my eyes and tell me you want me. Tell me you'd kill for me. Anything I want. Oh, I have something to tell you. Surprise, Ardat Yakshi. Don't count on it. But you... Who are you? Oh no. I see what's going on. The bitch herself found a little helper. Marin. Ugh. Mother. Do not call me that. I can't choose to stop being your daughter. Mother. You made your choice long ago. What choice? My only crime was being born with the gifts you gave me. Enough, Morin! I am the genetic destiny of the Asari. But they are not ready to reveal this. So I must die. You are a disease to be purged. Nothing more. I'm as strong as she is. Let me join you. I am already sworn to help you, Shepard. Let us finish this. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. And we have a choice, believe it or not, my friends, to kill Morinth or kill Samara, the Justicar that swore herself to us. That is on our side. We can kill her. And that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> Morinth will be more useful to me. You will regret your choice. <laughs> Thank you, Shepard. My mother was as powerful as she was hateful. You helped me. Now I'll help you. Let me take my mother's place on your team. You don't seem to care at all about the death of your mother. Why should I? She was dead to me long ago. But I'll keep her alive for you so you don't have any complications with your crew. I'm a dead ringer for my belated mother. Few people can tell us apart. And I've practiced long and hard to mimic her in every way. Have you absorbed your mother's powers? Don't be silly. I have a wide range of talents beyond my biotic abilities. Acting is one of them. It took years to perfect, but when I was younger, posing as my mother brought its advantages. How do you think I originally escaped from Bessia? Let me just slip into this horrible uniform and none will be the wiser. Yeah, so that's what happens. Morinth will literally uh, just look like her mom now. I'd like to look around a bit first. Take your time. I'll be ready whenever you are. Yep. She'll just, just go ahead and put on her mom's uniform and then Morinth will become Samara and that's it. That's just... And then Morinth is ready. just... Let's, let's go. go. This is going to be fun. But my friends, we are of course not going to do that. I just wanted to show you the option because it's cool. Morinth will join you. She actually does not have... Uh, Reeve is not uh, the the bonus ability that you would get from Samara. Morinth actually has a different one called Dominate. Uh, Reeve actually I think is 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 better. Uh, but anyways, let's do this the right way and let's go ahead and get to where we need to go. And surprise, here she comes. And let's choose the correct option. Let's kill Morinth. End of the line, Morinth. They call me a monster. <clears throat> Find peace in the embrace of the goddess. I am ready to leave this place and get on with my life. Are you ready to go as well? And after what just happened, I'm sure she's not going to have a great response, but are you okay, Samara? Do you want to talk about what happened? Shepard, what do you think I will say? What can I say? I just killed the bravest and smartest of my daughters. There are no words. I will try another time. For now, show mercy on a broken old warrior and let us leave. Okay, we can do that. Let's go. And we'll get the trophy doppelganger. Absolutely kicking butt there. 
we earned one squad point. We are now level 22. Samara has dealt with the art at Yakshi. She remains loyal to Shepard personally. Loyalty of the just card beyond question. Given apparent bonds of oath rendered to Shepard. Better than hoped, Cerberus activities will not be affected further by presence of Shepard's team. Interesting. Cerberus activities will not be affected further. Relieved to have Justicar's mission completed, unfortunately, body of Ardet Yakshi could not be taken for study. Genetic or abnormality could have been useful. Subject's expertise would have made her a valuable team member if sociopathic tendencies were mitigated. We will unlock Rave, Samara's power, which is incredibly useful. It does double damage to armor and barriers. Imagine if we had that bonus of power for the collector ship, it would have been amazing. It restores health and gives a temporary health bonus when the power is used against organics. Uh, she has a new outfit. We got the assault rifle upgrade, 30,000 from uh, credits from Cerberus, and that is all that we can grab here. So we're level 22, 750 experience, got us there, 32 Paragon points, 30,000 credits. Uh, but unfortunately, we have to walk all the way back to the Normandy. We're not, it doesn't just bring us there. Again, one of the few loyalty missions in the game that actually puts us out here instead of uh, in the, uh, on the Normandy, which can be useful if you're trying not to go back to the Normandy, but there's no other quest that we can do here. So it's not like we could have done this one before and I could have done it before the collector ship, even though it would have been great because it has the bonus power that I want. It is an incredible bonus power, by the way, for a Vanguard. It's so good stripping armor and barrier. Uh, and also helping yourself survive. It's a, it's not a huge cast animation. It doesn't take time to use it. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to use. Reeve is just a really, really good bonus power for a Vanguard. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the Normandy. Now that Samara's uh, loyalty is secured, Morinth is not there, which by the way, Morinth's ultimate fate in Mass Effect 3 if she was to survive this, she actually becomes an incredibly powerful enemy in Mass Effect 3, uh, believe it or not. So we're not gonna see her in this playthrough, but it is something that does happen if you choose her. So we're gonna go ahead and upgrade our rifle damage because we ended up just getting that, which will allow us to also increase our assault rifle uh, accuracy, which means our entire squad's assault rifles are now much more accurate, which is wonderful for us. And we're gonna go ahead and do the heavy bone weave that we picked up as well takes 50% less damage from melee attacks. Pfft, huss, who cares about them now, you know? And finally, advanced training so that we can pick up our a brand new Reeve. Now, we ended up getting Dominate in, 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 as well. Uh, I'm not actually sure. I guess you get both. Brainwash an organic enemy, forcing him to attack his allies. It's basically AI hacking, but on organics. I don't really care about AI hacking. I don't care about Dominate either. Uh, I guess you get both, which is actually news to me. I didn't know that you got both of those. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go with Reeve. Damages targets nervous or synthetic systems to prevent healing. Restores health, it gives a temporary health bonus when the power is used against organics. Very good against Krogans. Reeve also does double damage to armors and barriers. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that. We're gonna go into our squad. And finally, we're going to spend all of our points on Reeve. And we're gonna go with, we have area Reeve or uh, heavy Reeve. I definitely would recommend Heavy Reef because for the most part, a lot of enemies won't actually group up, especially a lot of collectors. They don't all sit in groups. They usually kind of spread out and attack from different angles. So I just don't really think Area Reef is worth it. It's also only three meters, so they have to be fairly close. So we're gonna go Heavy Reef instead. Uh, that's just going to, that's just gonna be, it's just gonna be better. Uh, and it allows us to really really work on eliminating a single target from the game now the other thing that i would recommend now now that we've done we could go shockwave i just don't think shockwave is worth it uh cryo ammo can actually be very useful especially if we end up going into squad cryo ammo uh while we have inferno ammo personally having our team have cryo ammo kind of just helps cc a lot of things and allows us to smash them into pieces which is not a horrible uh decision but we're gonna wait just a little bit there's no point in putting spending any of those just yet we're gonna go ahead and see that we have uh this mission here uh where is it samara samara ended the threat of her daughter morinth which is just so crazy wild we also have a few new assignments here omega packages for ish 
and the Eclipse Smuggling Depot that we were told about by our, uh, oh, no, no, by our dear friend, uh, Aria Tulok, who is a dear friend, and she does not get to decide she's not because she is. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll do that. And finally, let's go talk to Samara and see some of the repercussions that have happened after that. While also checking our private terminal real quick. I don't think we have any on red messages, but still worth checking. All right, let's see if Samara wants to talk about what happened now. Morinth haunted my dreams and waking hours equally. For the first time in 400 years, I am free. I am a ruined vessel of sorrow and regret, but I am free. It is not a feeling I can describe. Was it worth it? It was never a question of worth, but of need. I had to take the action I did, as did she. This was never a story that would have a happy outcome. That's true. You did your duty. What about your feelings? One of my daughters is dead. My hopes, my dreams were all bound up in my children. Still, my feelings have always come after my duty. The same is true of you. You said that Morinth was a monster, but she was still your daughter. She was the strongest and smartest. She would not accept the injustice thrust upon her. She fought to the end. I am so proud of her, Shepard. Killed her for being what she was. And I would again. But I also know what it means to leave everything behind and fight. Do you realize that she went on the run at the age of 40? I do not know human years well, but it is very young for Asari. 40 for an Asari would be very young. What will you do now that Morinth is gone? Assuming I survive your mission? I am a Justicar. Injustice still exists, and perhaps even other Ardat Yakshi. There's no way to correct the condition Morinth had? We are an advanced species, but we don't have magic. When the trait manifests at maturity, it is too late for mitigation. It only occurs in purebloods like myself. Perhaps that is the root of the stigma regarding Asari exclusive pairings. I don't know. I thought Ardat Yakshi were extremely rare. Asari have spread to many worlds. There are remote regions with no government oversight. If I travel to those worlds and they do exist, I will find them. Morinth claimed that her condition was the future of the Asari race. Morinth would say anything that served her cause. Ardat Yakshi are sterile, Shepard. That wouldn't be a particularly viable future for my people. You know, that was actually one of the things that I was thinking about was, what if Morinth was right? What if this is what happens? You know? What if, what if that was how they were supposed to evolve? But, she brings up a good point. If they're sterile, then it ain't. You don't want to settle down? I did. I returned to my homeworld and tried to start a family. I will fight and struggle all my life. That is my fate. When I die, it will not be in bed. I am at peace with that. And the last thing we can say. You still control the direction of your life. I have chosen this path. I truly am at peace. Due in no small part to you. Thank you, Samara. I know that wasn't easy to share. And, my friends, that is going to do it for today's episode of Mass Effect 2. It was a heavy one. It was a crazy one. It was a wild one. Man, I heard you were a wild... Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We have secured another loyalty. We finally have Heavy Reeve, which, by the way, uh, when I am able, I'm going to hockey that so that we can use it all the time because it's very, very useful. Uh, very useful for stripping barriers and in armor and allows us to bring somebody like Garrus without feeling like, oh man, now we can't get barriers off of people uh, because we can do it ourselves. And it's just super, super useful. So uh, that is why we did Samara's. The next episode is going to be awesome. I'm very excited for it and I'm excited for you to see it. So thank you guys so much for watching. A huge shout out to our newest patrons over on patreon.com slash missile online. Tanya and Sean Caster, thank you guys so much. And uh, a huge shout out to those of you watching these videos and the premieres. Love hanging out with you and I love seeing you guys in the chat. Thank you so much. And remember, Remember, never give up, never surrender to the Ardat Yakshi. Goodbye, everyone.